Hey everyone, it's Jen with Spirited Saturdays. And um, the topic this week is what do you do when you are being victimized? And I'm going to kind of just take it from last week. Um, I, was I was referring to bullying when I did my topic last week about, or my video last week on the topic of what do you do when somebody comes to you and tells you that they're being victimized. And so this this week it is about what do you do if you personally are being victimized. So to kind of keep in line with the subject of bullying, I mean this can really be applied to many things, but um I would I would I would like to say on this topic of bullying though. Um I think it's very important that, you know, these are things that I am kind of saying to my former self that I wouldn't have been able to know at the time. So um, yeah, I guess so from that perspective, I have to say that it's really important that you understand, first of all, that it's not your fault. You didn't do anything to deserve this. You didn't do anything wrong. You're a good person. You didn't, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing, you're not flawed. You're not in any way below anybody else. And the whole idea of bullying is to be made to feel that, that to, to really get the message that you are, in fact, less than. And if any of you are going through this right now, and it's, it's actually it's not just for, for being in school and being bullied, but it's really in any situation where you feel like you're the outcast or you feel like maybe people are talking about you or maybe people are are making you feel like you're different in a bad way, somehow just, you know, making you feel like you are not, you don't belong. Um, and if that's the case, and this could go for, for many different kinds of environments. So I really, I want you to know that you, that what they say isn't, Gold. What they say isn't necessarily the truth. And I'm just saying that they it's definitely not the truth, but but what they have to say, just because they're saying it doesn't make it the truth. That's that's what I mean by that. So even if it's a lot of people saying the same thing, it still doesn't make it the truth. Um and it certainly doesn't have to be your truth. So if you can try to start working on internalizing that to, you know, an understanding that it's, it's not always about what a lot of people think. And it's not, you know, if you were to just go along with that, then your own views of yourself might become really warped. You have to own things about yourself. Now, a lot of times people prey on people who they feel are weaker. So... They take certain personality traits and they twist them out of context and they use them against them. But really, it could very well be that those same personality traits that they're just twisting and using against you could be really great strengths about yourself, could be really things to own, you know? Like, maybe you're sensitive and maybe that means you're a really creative person and you're an artist and, like, be an introvert. You're, like, you know, be a super cool introvert like be own that you know own what that does for you own what that allows you to create own that that you, you know this is just an example I'm not saying uh, go be an introvert all the time but it is something that you know people might might use against you may you're the quiet one oh you're you know you know just you know they kind of get the wrong idea about a person but but those very things those eccentricities might be the very things that make you the awesome person that you are so try to just disregard what they say and own your own qualities own who you are I want you to also imagine yourself outside of that situation with a group of like-minded people with a group of people who are doing what you're doing and kind of acting in a similar way and all being able to kind of create together or to be, you know, people who have similar personality types just together, just just being themselves. And 
feel how okay and free that would be. You don't have to conform to be like anyone. You don't have to alter anything about your personality or anything about your who you are to conform to the group or to please the other people in the group even if you feel like you're being out and you're being called out for not being that way or for being who you are i i want you to own who you are it's very important and think of how free you would feel just being who you are if if you didn't have that burden if you didn't have those people telling you it's not okay to be who you are so just try to change your mindset a little bit about it you know this is not an accurate reflection of yourself and that's just one thing. That's one thing that I think is very important to do. Obviously, you want to be safe. You want to get yourself out of a situation that feels just threatening to your personal safety, whether it be your psychological, mental safety, or your physical safety. All of those things are very important. So, you know, definitely don't be ashamed to, conf to go to somebody and to tell them what's going on. And I mean, maybe that's easier said than done. Um, I mean, I remember, I, I think I said, yeah, I said, I, I went to somebody, I told them that somebody was being mean to me, and she said, like, this was my teacher, and she said that, oh, they, they really don't, they don't really don't like you. Like, that was it. There was no action, nothing further was said or done. And it really reinforced that I, it was me. They didn't like me. Um, you know... So, I mean, if I had somebody to tell me, like, you need to go to somebody else now because that person is obviously just not receptive, then maybe I would have gone to somebody else. And um, not knowing, you know, that um, somebody may have taken me seriously. So know that, you know, there are people who will take you seriously and who won't make you feel ashamed. There is nothing to be ashamed of. If you're going through something, if you feel like you, if you're being victimized, so much of the manipulation that happens when you're being victimized is to really make you feel like you have, like you should be victimized or you, you, you should be ashamed of it. You, you did play a part in it. It is about you. It is your fault. All of those things, those are messages that are just sneakily crept in there, you know, and, and, and it's perfectly natural then to feel that way. And, it makes it harder to go to somebody because you feel like you're admitting a huge flaw about yourself. You feel like it's very like you're feeling like like there, there's almost no justification for it. It's like, well, all they all don't like me. What do I do? It's if it, it's very tricky. Um, so I just try to. Just try to trust that there are people who are going to hear you and who aren't going to agree with them. And try to trust also that there's a lot of false power in group agreement when it comes to victimizing a single person. And that just because everybody in a group believes or claims to believe the same thing about you or says the same thing to you or makes you feel bad about yourself in the same way, it, it doesn't mean that they all actually feel that way. They are doing it for a sense of belonging. They're doing it because their friends are doing it. They're doing it to join in and be cool. It's not a reflection of how they, on how they as individuals see you. So try to remember that when you are approaching somebody for help, know that that person is not going to see you in the same way that these people do. Know that that person and that there, know that there are people who are there and who are willing to help you. You know, you you should never ever have to feel stuck in a situation where you're being made to feel badly about yourself. That's you don't deserve that. You deserve so much more than that. It's hard to see it when you're in the middle of it. It's hard to even identify why it's happening or what you know or or see that it could be any other way, but it can be. And you have more power than the situation is allowing you to realize. So if you bring that situation and you bring that problem and that concern to somebody, just be open to the idea that there will be somebody out there with more knowledge of your power than you currently have. And then 
the idea is that they would get to instill that power in you and allow you to see it for yourself and they can be your mirror. There, there are people to help you and there are resources and try to also just remember that you're not alone. Like in that situation, it might feel like you are extremely alone and that your aloneness is just being highlighted for everyone to see. But if you think about it, I mean, bullying as an example, there are many people, unfortunately, in this world who are being bullied on a daily basis. And if you knew who some of them were, you could talk to them and you could feel, you know, but, but the whole, the whole, the whole thing about bullying and the whole cycle is to continue to make you feel like you are alone so that you're too ashamed to even reach out. So that's the very idea. And if, if that's happening, it means that there's something very wrong. If you feel like you can't even reach out to somebody to try to connect, see if anybody else feels the same way. Because there are so many other people who have gone through this and who are going through it, unfortunately. But you're not alone. And even if you don't meet anyone who is going through it because you are unable to foster this connection at this time or just it's not available to you right now, just know that, just know that you aren't. Know trust if you can that there are others who understand and if you can just draw on that kind of universal strength to try to empower yourself like I mean this is very different but I was going through a hard time a few months ago and a friend gave me the advice to draw on the strength of all of the, the people who have been through this situation that I have than I was currently in, past and present, that there's kind of a universal backing, there's a universal support, there's a pool of support that you could draw on, the strength of people, the strength, the energy, the love, the encouragement that people have left behind, you know, it's a very, in a sense, kind of ethereal way of looking at it, but it, it's very real though, because, you know, these things are, are here for your taking the skills that people have offered, the strength that people have offered in generations past or in, you know, or just maybe right now, but in places that you don't have access to. Like, there, there's so much love and understanding out there that might not feel within your reach, but it's there. And there's a bridge to it. And trust that you can find that bridge. And start, you know, even if you just start small by asking somebody for help. I think the very act of asking will show you based on the response that you get that you can lessen your shame so that can then build on itself but often that first step is just taking that chance and telling someone it's so important you deserve so much more than whatever it is you're experiencing that's making you feel victimized or that is victimizing you you are better than that and you deserve so much more than that and so I encourage you to take action on your own behalf and just stand up for yourself and do what's right for you. Do what's right in the interest of your self-love, even if you can't see that self-love because it's been so marred by all this stuff that you're going through. You know, um, take that first step and trust that something really good and really empowering and really freeing may very well follow. Take care and have a great week. Bye.